The North Carolina Japan Center is incredibly honored to have a few minutes this morning to spend with Ambassador Koji Tomita. Uh, ambassador Koji Tomita is the ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary of Japan to the United States of America. And this is actually his uh, second assignment, I believe, to the Washington uh, DC area. Uh, about eight years ago, he was uh, chief of mission. And Ambassador Tomita, thank you so much for making time for us today. We know that your schedule is very busy. So thank you for joining us today. Well, pleasure is mine, Jonathan. Uh, it's great to be here today. today. Thank you so much. I had read that North Carolina has a special place in your heart. <laughs> and I wanted to, to ask you just to, if you could give us just a few words about that. Yes, it, it does have a special place in my heart because, uh, you know, uh, North Carolina was my first exposure to this country. Uh, when I was sophomore at the university, I was uh, um, incredibly uh, lucky uh, to be given the opportunity to participate in a national program uh, organized by the Davidson College. So I, I spent one year there along with uh, six, seven overseas students. And uh, I had a wonderful time. And uh, it really motivated me to um, work in the areas of foreign service, uh, particularly uh, uh, work for the, uh, the fur further strengthening um, Japan-US uh, relations. So, uh, you know, North Carolina is a, is, is a place where it all started. <laughs> Well, we're very, very much looking forward to, to welcoming you back to North Carolina when we're on the other side of this pandemic and to reintroduce you to North Carolina barbecue. <laughs> uh, that's a big deal down here. Um, so I uh, would just like to go ahead and get right into our questions for you today, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so we are really entering a brand new era now, uh, not only in terms of, of our bilateral relations you know, between the U.S. and Japan, but, mm -hmm. you know, specifically, again, under the, the Biden Suga administrations and uh, also globally. And we're seeing some light at the end of the pandemic tunnel, so to speak, you know, in various degrees. And uh, at the same time, we're, you know, growing political and economic rifts uh, between regions of the world. May we ask you, what are the top priorities uh, for your office over the next few years? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I uh, took up my post uh, uh, back in January, uh, a week after the inauguration, to be precise. So, you know, the, the priority for any ambassador arriving at the time of a political transition is, first of all, first of all try to, you know, um, uh, make uh, appropriate connection with the new administration, opening up a line of communication, creating a framework in which, uh, you know, the, we can work with the, uh, the new administration uh, very smoothly. And uh, on that account, I think we are making an uh, incredibly good start. And, you know, uh, since I, I arrived here, there has been very robust exchanges uh, uh, between the leaders of two countries, including Prime Minister Suga's visit to Naples. Uh, of course, uh, there are you know number of uh, positions to be filled in the new administration. So I think uh, this task will continue. But so far, um, we are making a very good start uh, in terms of uh, working with the new administration. On the uh, uh, substantial side, you know, my, my priority is, of course, uh, to, to make sure the, our alliance uh, will continue to play the role it's been playing over decades, uh, which is the uh, uh, maintenance of peace and stability in the, in the Pacific region. And this, this task, uh, of course, will include the how to respond to the uh, increasing, um, uh, increasingly uh, um, uh, consequential challenge posed by the uh, China. And, uh, but beyond that, um, Japan and the United States uh, uh, need to work together uh, to address 
uh, the, uh, the 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 wide-ranging challenges uh, facing the uh, national society. Uh, first and foremost, I think uh, you you said that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but still the pandemic is ongoing ongoing crisis. So I think the two countries need to work together to to make sure that uh, uh, to to minimize the disruptions uh, caused by the uh, this pandemic. And also, uh, we have to work uh, to, to facilitate the national society uh, recovering from these uh, dislocations. Just a few few uh, days ago, I think uh, both Japan and the United States have decided to share uh, the stockpile of vaccines to 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 the uh, the broader international society. That's just one of the uh, uh, examples of, of the uh, the contribution Japan and the United States can make. And of course, uh, beyond the pandemic, uh, there are a number of issues we need to address uh, globally, uh, including the very serious challenge of, of climate change. So there are, you know, we have a very full plate in front of us. And uh, uh, but unfortunately, I think uh, uh, you know we are we are perfectly ready to 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 tackle all these uh, challenges. Yes, certainly, and thank you for your thoughts on that. Um, and as you had mentioned, uh, Prime Minister Suga recently paid a visit to to uh, President Biden, and you also named a few, just a few of the the areas that uh, our countries are needing to to, in your words, tackle uh, together. Mm -hmm. If you could name one area right uh, of primary focus between the two administrations really the a, a very top priority or one, mm -hmm. one of the top three perhaps uh what would that area of focus be well um before um talking about uh, the um, um discussing the uh, the main deliverable of, of the uh, the suga biden uh, visit uh, in Naples. Let me underscore the importance of uh, the the, uh, uh, the personal rapport between the two leaders, and uh, you know this this was the the first encounter between the uh, the, the two principles of, of respective government, and uh, uh, beyond everything they um, discussed, um, I think it's it was very important for them to to. Uh, um, forge uh, a close relation, personal relations of mutual trust, uh, on which they can they can uh, uh, on the basis of which they can uh, uh, advance the, the the collaboration uh, for the uh, 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 number of uh, uh, policy areas. And uh, on that specific account, I think the two leaders. Uh, 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 made a great success in, in getting, know, getting to know each other, developing a real personal rapport and affinity. And I, I take a, a great encouragement from, from that um, um, development. So, you know, um, first and foremost, before talking about any substance, I think it was, I think the most important deliverable of, of the visit. I mean, the establishment of very strong personal bond. And that being said, um, if you um, uh, want me to name uh, one priority, uh, judging from the, the amount of time the two leaders uh, uh, spend discussing about, uh, is of course a strategic challenge posed by, by China. And, uh, and of course, the uh, two leaders uh, shared concern uh, about the, uh, uh, the increasingly uh, aggressive behaviors uh, um, by China in the region, uh, including uh, uh, an attempt to change the status quo unilaterally. Uh, they shared a concern about the uh, uh, same acts of Chinese uh, uh, behaviors, which are not in conformity with the international norms. And of course, uh, we, we talked about uh, you know serious issues like a human rights situation. And uh, they agreed to uh, uh, on the need uh, to have very candid discussion, candid conversation with the China over all these issues. So, if you look at the uh, joint statement uh, issued after the uh, visit, 
the language was uh, one of the most robust language we adopted uh, in discussing uh, our, our relations with China. But that being said, um, two leaders at the same time recognized the importance of stability in the respective relations with China. And also they recognized the, uh, uh, the complexity of, of challenges ahead. Um, China is not the, uh, the one dimensional you know, superpower like Soviet Union that used that, uh, that was um, during the Cold War. I mean, China, after all, the, uh, the second largest economy in the world, it has the 1.4 billion people living there. And also uh, China is a, in a position to, to make a positive contribution to global efforts to address uh, wide ranging issues like climate change. So um, as uh, Secretary of State Tony Blinken said, there, there are uh, several different aspects to, to our engagement with China. He, he talked about uh, three types of engagement, uh, three being adversarial, competitive, and collaborative. So this shows you how complex it is to, to, to uh, um, establish uh, our relation with, with this country. And um, one additional point that I'd like to underscore is, I think there was an agreement uh, between the two leaders that uh, whatever we do uh, in, in terms of responding to Chinese challenge, we have to do it from the position of strength. And uh, this strength comes from partly uh, from working together with the, uh, the allies and partners, uh, like mining countries. So, um, you know, as soon as uh, this administ administration started, you um, started to see a new uh, diplomatic initiatives like upgrading the framework court, for instance. I think that is part of our uh, efforts to, to, uh, to strengthen uh, the, uh, uh, our alliance and the, the partnership uh, with the uh, like many countries. The other thing, um, the strength uh, also comes from making uh, uh, ourselves more competitive and resilient. Uh, so uh, I think uh, two countries uh, agreed to uh, uh, work jointly and also uh, individually as uh, the strength, the competitiveness and resilience of, of its uh, economy. So um, the, 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 the efforts to uh, maintain an edge in uh, science and technology, uh, protecting uh, uh, secure uh, 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 the supply chains, all these things will be included in, in this effort. So uh, in a nutshell, I think we'll be taking a, a more sort of holistic approach to, to the question of China. Thank you for mentioning that about the resiliency and the competitiveness individually and together um, of our economies. I mean, we just had the announcement about the US Innovation and Competition Act from President Biden. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, bi a bipartisan effort in order to do just that. Uh, so yes, thank you for your comments on, on, on those areas. And of course you did mention the pandemic and uh, you know, we've had some recent challenges. I mean, of course, all over the world, but uh, in Japan as well, um, you know, it's, it's greatly affected international travel, certainly between the US and Japan. Mm -hmm. What changes, if any, are being discussed as we vaccinate more of the population, um, especially in the U.S. and in the lead up to the Tokyo Olympics? What about education-based travel, um, such as for international exchange students? Do you have any thoughts on that? First of all, um, in terms of um, a response to uh, the pandemic, I think um, Japan has been doing a very decent job uh, in containing the, uh, the infection. Our you know, cumulative number of uh, um, positive patients, uh, uh, you know, just over 760,000, and our death toll um, stands at uh, 13,000, which, which uh, I mean, of course, uh, 30,000 death uh, is a still I mean, serious uh, um, uh, problem, but uh, I mean, compared with other countries, I think 
Japan has been doing um, a very decent job. But at the same time, you know, there has been uh, some public uh, uh, grumbling, grumbling uh, about the, the slowness uh, of the, uh, the government efforts to, to vaccinate the people. Uh, but on that, uh, uh, in that area, we are also making uh, uh, added efforts to, to expedite the, uh, the vaccination. So, uh, you know, the Prime Minister has decided to bring in the self-defense forces for the large-scale uh, vaccination uh, uh, program. So I think um, uh, by the time we uh, host the, the Olympic Games in, in late July, I think uh, the, the situation in Japan will uh, as in vastly improve. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, the government is committed to uh, 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 deliver the games in a safe and secure environment. So we are talking about what sort of precautions we need to take, uh, you know, in this in, in uh, uh, co cooperation with a number of authorities, including IOC, local government, and uh, our own uh, organizing committee. So, um, so uh, you know, and the, the Tokyo Games uh, will, you know, signify, you know, um, uh, the uh, internationally, uh, the, the world is uh, slowly, gradually uh, getting back to normal. And I hope the, the games will, uh, 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 show uh, uh, a great deal of encouragement and hope for the uh, uh, people around the world. But uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, to, to get back to normalcy, we need uh, uh, more progress uh, in terms of controlling the disease. And of course, uh, uh, I think the, uh, the area of international traffic uh, will be uh, one of the priority areas. Uh, as you said, uh, the, the exchange of people. Um, and of course, uh, we have learned to communicate through the electronic means, but at the same time, uh, uh, you know, meeting people in person is uh, still very important uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, in terms of uh, 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 exchanges between uh, uh, our two, our two countries, uh, we are slowly uh, getting back to normal in, in this area as well. Uh, for instance, uh, um, uh, the Mansfield program uh, under which uh, the U.S. Uh, government officials uh, are sent to Japan uh, for the for, um, uh, sort of internship. I think we are resuming uh, the program uh, in July. And um, uh, we also have had a lapse in JET program, but uh, we are looking uh, forward to uh, resuming the uh, uh, the participant traveling to Japan starting from the late June, and of course, uh, um, although we have had some uh, um, di uh, disruptions, but there has been continuing uh, um, uh, uh, stream uh, of the, uh, the 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 government sponsored students uh, are traveling to Japan. So, uh, uh, so we are looking toward uh, uh, a lot of improvement in terms of uh, um, uh, you know people to people exchanges, including the student exchange, academic exchange, so on and so forth. So, um, I, I uh, 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 I'm looking forward to to the further progress in that area in the coming weeks and months. Thank you. Uh, yes, the JET program is very special to me as a JET program mm -hmm. alumnus myself. I was stationed to uh, Shigaken, Shiga Prefecture, for three right. years, and uh, it's a very special. And I'm 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 very invested in seeing the continuance and success of that program. It's very important. Thank mm -hmm. you for your thoughts on on those subjects. One thing that you uh, brought up was the uh, the importance of you know, of course, of interaction. What we're seeing in higher education is during the pandemic, there was a, uh, a refocus on developing virtual exchange programs um, really out of necessity during that time. Um, these 
uh, COIL or COIL type programs, collaborative online international learning. Mm -hmm. And um, what we're seeing the data from that is that these, the access to these kind of programs, even outside of pandemic conditions, actually drives interest into traditional exchange um, from students who would normally not have access to these kind of international interactions. Mm -hmm. um, at NC State, we've uh, just this past semester uh, started these kind of exchanges to great success uh, with Nagoya University, uh, Waseda University, and mm -hmm. Kansai University. Um, what are your thoughts on this kind of interaction? Of course, you know, face-to-face, -face in-person interaction is very important. Um, but really the importance of any kind of exchange between US and Japanese college students and high school students and students of all ages. And your experience at, at a Davidson College mm -hmm. uh, in North Carolina, I just wanted to hear a few thoughts you might have about the importance of this kind of exchange. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. Um, I think one, um, civil lining to the uh, the pandemic situation if there is any is you know people discovering there there are a number of ways to to interact um out there i mean electronically uh, in particular and uh, you know i'm i'm pretty much on the wrong side of digital divide but still i i'm a, i come to learn the uh, the zoom meeting and so on and so forth and and for instance um in Washington DC, we have uh, annual cherry blossoms uh, festivals, and uh, we, you know, because of the pandemic, uh, we uh, uh, we gave up doing uh, uh, the, the kind of events we we usually do, like a parade and uh, um, uh, cherry blossom princess uh, contests and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, we also discovered. Uh, through the electronic means, a lot of events were done online. We, in fact, we were uh, able to reach out to the uh, even broader uh, general public. Um, you know, viewership of these uh, the events uh, we uh, produce online uh, in incredibly high. So there's a you know uh, very very important potential to exploit um, through these. Uh, uh, you know, innovative means of uh, 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 communication. And that certainly uh, will be applied to, to the uh, education area. And uh, I understand there's a um, uh, 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 sort of virtual uh, collaborative uh, uh, study effort called COIL. And I think the uh, North, North Carolina state uh, is making a um, you know, pioneering effort uh, and engaging Japanese universities. And I think uh, uh, these efforts uh, are, are commended, not just to um, uh, uh, fill in the, the, the vacuum created by the pandemic, but something that would uh, add value uh, to the uh, traditional uh, way of uh, academic collaboration. So I, 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 I find a lot of potential uh, in these new types of interactions. Thank you for, for your thoughts on that. Uh, and of course, you know, we're, we're looking forward to getting on the other side of this pandemic so that we can have all kinds mm -hmm. of uh, interaction and exchange open to us. Um, as I'm sure you, you're, you're aware, you know, here in North Carolina, specifically in our research triangle, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have a very large spectrum of um, industry, right? And industry government partnerships. Uh, we have over 24,000 North Carolinians uh, employed by Japanese companies in our state, uh, ranging from biotech to, to pharmaceutical research, automotive supply chain, heavy machinery, sustainable energy, mm -hmm. uh, food production. And Japan is consistently in our very top sources of FDI or uh, you know foreign direct investment. Um, mm -hmm. May we ask, what are at the, the the federal level, at the government level, what are the specific industries in the U.S. and Japan that are being 
focused on in terms of fostering growth and cooperation into the future? Mm-hmm. Well, um, on the on the policy side, um, uh, as I as I discussed um, in the context of uh, Ms. Prime Minister Suga's visit uh, in Japan uh, to the United States. Uh, there's um, there's been agreement uh, between the two governments to to make uh, um, robust efforts in the area of you know science and technology um, and also um, uh, uh, cutting edge um, uh, uh, business areas. Um, so uh, I think the. Uh, the, the specific areas mentioned uh, in in these uh, agreements include uh, you know 5G, uh, open RAN, uh, general information technology, uh, AI, quantum uh, uh, technology, and of course the pharmaceuticals, semiconductors, and so on and so forth. So um, I think um, the um, the areas. Um, uh, in which uh, North Carolina has uh, strength, um, I think, uh, 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 generally fall into the uh, the, ca- the categories. Uh, the governments uh, will be attaching a lot of importance. So, I think uh, there will be a, a, a synergy um, between, you know, North Carolina and uh, Carolinian effort to to attract the further investment, and the government push. Uh, for the, uh, the the progress uh, in the uh, uh, joint uh, collaboration uh, in the kind of areas I have discussed, um, and uh, you know North Korea, Carolina has been, as you said, one of the most important destinations of Japanese investment. And uh, if you uh, could uh, ally the excellent uh, research environment with the uh, uh, good uh, clim- uh, investment climate. I think uh, North Carolina remains to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the very important destination of Japanese investment. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to welcoming many more Japanese companies to North Carolina and to also offer North Carolinian uh, services and products into mm-hmm. the, the Japanese market. Um, well, Ambassador Tomita, thank you so much. You know, really on behalf of, uh, of course, um, North Carolina State University and North Carolina in general and and uh, the Honorary Consul for Japan in North Carolina, David Robinson, who's very much looking forward to welcoming you uh, mm-hmm. to, back to North Carolina. And, uh, and our uh, our corporate uh, members, CBC America and Fujifilm Diosynth Biotechnologies, uh, Hitachi ABB Power Grids, uh, Nexon Pruitt, and O'Brien Atkins and Associates. You know, we are looking forward to welcoming you back down here to give you some southern hospitality and to connect you with the uh, the Japan related stakeholders in our state and. Thank you so much for your time and for your thoughts. We uh, are looking forward to uh, your ambassadorship over the the coming years. And uh, please do stay safe and and healthy. Well, thank you very much for that um, very kind uh, uh, invitation. And uh, since my arrival, I I felt a little bit reticent uh, about going out of Washington DC because of the, uh, the pandemic. But uh, as we discussed, uh, things are getting, um, you know, more and more stabilized. So I'm feeling less constrained going out of the uh, Beltway. And in fact, uh, I'm starting to visit uh, the, 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 the various states uh, are starting from, from uh, this month. So North Carolina will be uh, among the top of, of my uh, uh, priorities. Uh, as the destination of my trip. So I very much look forward to, to the opportunity to, to visit uh, your state and uh, to be reconnected with the, uh, the people. Um, so, um, and thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, really enjoyed it. Thank you, Ambassador Tomita. And we will ensure that your visit to North Carolina is worthwhile. 
。ありがとうございました。うん、本日はいつ,いつも忙しいながら、はい、時間を作っていただき、誠にありがとうございます。はい、こちらこそ、またあの、ノスケラナでお会いするのを楽しみにしています。お会いするのを楽しみにしています。When I、uh, mentioned to our governor, Roy Cooper, about、mm-hmm. your appointment, he was very excited and he、uh, had me write、uh, a letter、yes. from North Carolina. Please convey、uh, to the governor that I am really looking forward to seeing him and uh, uh, work for the、uh, even closer、um, uh, ties between Japan and the state of North Carolina. Well, thank you very much. And please do take very good care. And、uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you when it's safe to do so. Okay. Thank you. All right.